I really came to understand it's not a battle of science versus religion. It's a battle of worldviews and yeah. which worldview are you going to put your faith in? And I've chosen to put my trust in the Creator God, the God of the Bible. And it's a more rational, reasonable way to look at the world overall. I'm in our Creation Education Lab at the Creation Museum with Roger Patterson or Mr. P. So Roger, how, what kind of experiments have you done in this lab? Well, you wouldn't believe it, but everything from biology experiments to chemistry experiments to physics experiments to geology, pretty much everything that you can think of in science. I'm kind of a generalist, so I enjoy <laughs> doing all kinds of things that glorify God and help people understand everything about Him. Have you ever blown anything up in this lab? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> in fact, just the other day in our chemistry lab, we have our chemistry students here. So one of the great things we get to do here is we have homeschool students who come for chemistry labs throughout really the year. Cool. and. Uh, we did our combustion labs. <laughs> that sounds so right up your alley. <laughs> we learned about how God uses, uh, God created combustion for us to be able to use fuels to move things around. And we did lots of combustion demonstrations. Absolutely. <laughs> so we blew all kinds of things up. And the students even got to do it Ooh. very safely, of course. Of course. But yes. <laughs> they got <laughs> so to do fun. their own little mini explosions inside of test tubes, learning about how the oxygen to fuel ratio uh, controls how things burn clean or dirty. Okay. And they got the final little explosion that whistled and barked and scared them all. And it was oh, that's so fun. the highlight of my day. <laughs> scaring <laughs> students scare is the highlight scaring, of your day. Scaring students, giving <laughs> quizzes back when I was teaching in the classroom. And then, yeah, scaring students, now I get to do that. <laughs> okay, so are you going to scare me with anything that I see on the table? No, okay, everything's cute. pretty benign here today. Nothing's going to explode Nothing's going to explode. Okay, no. all right. But we do have a fun little experiment. So all right. one of the things I get to do here is teach our um, daily programs that we call our Discover programs. So every guest who comes to the museum is, has access to those programs. And we have all kinds of amazing teachers here um, who teach very cool things about God's creation. I do a workshop called Colorful Clues in Creation. I got to slow down when I yeah, say that's that. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> and we teach about why this is Claude, my pet lobster. Hello, Claude. Claude is a uh, star of my show. He works with me on Unlocking Science, my TV program as well, but mm -hmm. he's in a lot of my programs. And Claude helps us understand how color works and how God created light to bounce off of things and help us see things. Why don't you slip on that little pair of pink glasses right there? And nothing's going to blow up. Nothing's okay, going to blow okay. up. All right. And what do you see when you look up at the lights there? As oh, you wow. It's like there's rainbows everywhere. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is well, not it, rainbows. Is it like... raining in here? <laughs> it hopefully it's not is not. It's not raining. So that's actually a spectrum. Okay, we see the okay. spectrum of light. So we talk about how light that works really and cool. <laughs> got created color. Okay, don't wear these too long. It'll give you a headache and yeah. make you dizzy. The room is very yep. colorful all of a sudden. <laughs> so we talk about how God created color and we use those things to understand how God designs things, how we are made in God's image and we design things. So we create kind of like God created. He made everything out of nothing. We can't do that. <laughs> no, we can't do that. So we recreate and we do some fun things and we do a little forensic investigation Ooh, that okay. uses, uh, I use a little scenario, somebody stole my brownies. And, uh oh, okay, serious so offense. Take this piece of paper here. Okay. This is called chromatography paper and right. I get the suspect's pens. So we give the, we give the guests these five pens. These are the five pens from the suspects and they're marked out on the piece of paper there. Okay, so okay. fold that into a triangle for me. Fold it long ways this way, so okay. it's in thirds. And then we're gonna use this special solution we call chromatography solution. Just like that? Yep, it's just okay. a mixture of um, ethanol and acetone. And we're gonna, we're gonna turn it inside out for the oh, camera okay. so the camera can oh, see it a little sense. bit better. Okay. <laughs> then we're gonna squirt some of this solution in here, down in the bottom. Now, when we put ink onto a paper, it usually has alcohols inside of the ink, and we talk okay. all about that. And this is gonna help us sort out the molecules. So we're going to do a little forensic investigation here. And then all I've right. prepared another one to look at the different colors that we find inside of things like markers that we can do okay. with ink pens. So we've got these colorful little dots across here. All right. Okay. So what we're trying to do is redissolve the inks, basically. So we're redissolving the inks and then they're gonna spread out on the paper and we should be able to see them, the molecules of ink moving up the paper. That's so cool. All right, here we go. Here's this one. And then before we got started, I had you draw this fun little pattern on yes, these pieces of paper. Art. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and lift your paper out of there. All right. I'm going to squirt a little bit of this solution in here. Now, this is just a mixture of alcohol and acetone. It smells amazing. <laughs> it really <laughs> does. It. It's, it's kind of right. like fingernail polish and remover. Just goes yep, in here, yep, right? Just sit that down in there. And I did one too. We'll see whose turns out more lovely, who's the Ooh, better artist. Okay, in these all right. <laughs> I didn't know it was a contest. Goodness, I would have tried harder. <laughs> all right, so we're going to set these things up here and all let right. these run for just a minute. Okay, so the way we use this in forensic investigation we'll talk about in just a minute we're gonna let those run and let the watch the ink yeah it it's like moving up, the paper, up there. the paper that's really cool yeah so you get to interact with guests a lot during your programs after your programs what's your favorite part about getting to interact with the guests after you to discover programs or labs or um, part of it is the wow factor <laughs> I think it's uh, I love I love talking to people as uh, I've, I've shown them the wonder in God's creation connecting those things back to the Bible, how mm. the scientific principles that we've looked at in creation and all these scientific demonstrations that I get to do point to the awesome creation that God's given us. And then how we see those things confirmed in scripture, how scripture's our authority, it's our starting point as we think about those things. I often get older guests who say, man, I wish you were my science teacher. <laughs> I would have learned so much more. Then I remind them, I still would have given them tests. It wouldn't have been all fun and games. <laughs> it's not all uh, blowing things no. up. <laughs> and I say my, my TV show, Unlocking Science, is for kids of all ages, but it's great to hear uh, families who come and say they use the program in their homeschooling so and fun. those types of things. That's a, that's a great encouragement. But getting to hear how people have learned about God's creation and then really the connections to the gospel, how I get to share the gospel. Mm. One of my favorite programs is called Up in Flames. <laughs> I really just get to blow stuff up for an hour, but at the end- Guests love that one. <laughs> yes, at the end, there's a, a very clear connection back to God as creator who's upholding all things, but there's a, a, a connection there to the gospel. So I get to share the gospel message and the hope of a future with the creator as christ has come and god the flesh to bear the sins for us he rose from the dead to prove that he's god and we can have that future hope of salvation so the gospel connections to take my understanding of god's creation and science and then connect that back to the mm, gospel and share yeah. the gospel with the guests that's really uh, my greatest joy at the end of the day as much as i love doing these fun experiments and blowing things up and launching things through the air. Those are all great, but but really my passion is to connect those things all back to the gospel. That's really neat. A lot of atheists will say like science and faith are in conflict. You're using science to point people to the gospel. So how should parents address that with their kids of like science and faith aren't in this kind of battle or conflict like so many people think. Yeah, well I actually used to believe that. I was actually <laughs> trained as a, I was an atheist and trained as an evolutionist when I was in university. So I used to have that worldview and I thought mm. that's the way the world worked. Uh, but that's not the way I understand those things anymore because my worldview has changed. And when I came to understand that I used to put my faith in scientific thinking and what we call naturalism. That was mm. my worldview. That was how I, I understood the world worked. Um, I just had faith in science was the way we'd understand everything worked. And, mm. and that was a faith system. Now my faith is in the God of the Bible, the one who's created all those things. He's, he's the triune God and I can trust in him as the creator. So I really, came to understand it's not a battle of science versus religion it's mm. a battle of worldviews and yeah. which worldview are you going to put your faith in and i've chosen to put my trust in the creator god the god of the bible and it's a more rational reasonable way to look at the world overall mm, yeah are our experiments done now? I think so. All right, let's, all right, let's, let's see. Look at okay, so let's start with this one. Let's see which suspect stole my brownies. So all go right. ahead and pull that piece of paper out of there. And it's a little bit wet. <laughs> now you told me already you weren't wearing any fingernail polish. Nope, so. no fingernail polish, we're good. So what we do with this one is we look at this E dot here, this evidence dot, and we try to okay. match it up with which of these other inks do you think lines up the best with one of those others? 
All right. Well, so these which, ones are much more purple. Okay. So on we this can see side. the different types yeah. of pigments in That's the so inks. That's so cool. Yeah, these ones like right out. are purple at the top, but then blue more yeah. towards so the bottom. So that means that ink must have different types of pigments mixed okay. in together to get the blue color. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and then these ones think? fade away. Yeah. The, I mean, one looks almost identical. It's yeah. identical to three. Okay. So, so that I'm going to say us that whoever's number one. It's most likely stole that your brownies. suspect pen number one wrote the note that okay. was left that said they stole my brownies. <laughs> it's kind of them to leave a note. Now are the well, fingerprints on the pen? Um, <laughs> well, there's your fingerprints Well, now. I took it off of, I took it off the desk, so I know whose desk I took it off of. So suspect <laughs> pen number one. All right. Okay, so this matches up. So when we think about the way these, these lines match up here, we can use this as forensic evidence to say pen number one was the most likely pen that wrote the note. And That's now does that really mean neat. that suspect one stole it? Not necessarily. And uh, we use this to talk about circumstantial evidence. And yeah. then again, I tie it into God is a God of justice. That's why we oh, see yeah. justice and there's a gospel mm -hmm. connection there. But God has shown me mercy in Christ. <laughs> and so I can extend mercy to someone who's who's wronged me and, and get to uh, use that as a gospel connection even in, in this workshop. Oh, that's really cool. Yep. And then we see here, these are right. our... Our other oh, those are pretty. Our, our <laughs> colors inside of there. And notice as we look at these different colors there, you can see some of those different markers. These are the different markers that we use. Yeah. They must have different pigments in them because they separated out That's into so different neat. colors. Yeah, especially like there's like yellow and red on the one side and yep. green and blue. That's so cool. So we can separate those out. Uh, we use that in the workshop. We, we crush up uh, with some of our. Um, Explore programs where we have students come in for either day or we have our summer camps. We do that with plants and we oh, examine really all those cool. inside of plants. Uh, we can do it with the different inks like we did there. We did it with M&Ms, <laughs> different <laughs> dyes and, and candies. I don't think they taste as good once you put them in the solution. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> all the red inks that we can find. Some of them don't even spread, so those, wow, are, those yeah. are fast. So um, all oh, kinds of so things. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's all take right. a look at let's. All right, who did the prettier one? Who's got the prettier? prettier art piece here. So we can use this to create. God is a God who loves beautiful things. And we've designed some art here using our different All right. um, patterns that we put on there. And um, that's so cool. My yellow colors. didn't spread at all. My green one in the middle there didn't spread yeah, at all. Yeah, the green either. didn't really spread either, but the red and the blue really spread out. Yeah. So this is a simple project that Anybody can do it home. You can use coffee filters or okay. regular paper or anything like that. And, and just, just some rubbing alcohol, regular markers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's just pretty cool. That's a out. fun thing to try at home. And right now it's almost Christmas time Ooh. for us when we're filming this, but boring white snowflakes? Nah. Do this <laughs> first okay. and then what cut out your idea. patterns and have some colorful snowflakes. That's really cool. Christmas. Okay. So whose is prettier? Mine, uh, obviously. Obviously yours is. Yeah, yeah. mine I'll, definitely. I'll give you the prettier Yeah, Although right the purple now. does look nice on yours, I think. Purple's, I, yeah, purple's my favorite color. So oh, okay, gotta, okay. Gotta, gotta add color. some purple it's in good there. good color. <laughs> <All right. laughs> God makes beautiful things and we get to imitate him as his image bears. It's not things. nearly as pretty as anything God has made. Just putting no, that out there. Not. Like compare this to a flower. No. <laughs> definitely mm. not. No. <laughs> so obviously at the Creation Museum, we're not afraid of science here. We love doing science experiments. We love teaching people about science. Um, and you touched on that a little bit, but how are we able to do that? How are we as Christians able to use the things God has made? The same things atheists use to teach people in evolution worldview, but we can use them to teach the truth of God's Word. Yeah, we think about uh, the way the Bible talks about God's creation, uh, a passage like Psalm 19 and Nehemiah 9 and Romans 1. They say, mm -hmm. if we look at the creation, it will tell us about the Creator, some of His attributes. Yeah. And that's what I try and do in my programs. Uh, so when I teach about chemistry, I'd show people the, the periodic table and I say, okay, don't get freaked out. I'm going to show you the scary picture and I show them the periodic table because uh, it's, it's a picture of all these different elements we know. There's order, there's consistency, right. there's yeah. reliability. They always react the same way. That points me to a God who is orderly and mm -hmm. logical and consistent. And so in the atheistic or the naturalistic framework, why should we expect things to always react the same way? Why should we expect to have order in the first place if they came out of random chance processes? Mm. But if there's a, a God of order who created all these things, an all-powerful being, then that's consistent with those. So the biblical worldview 
is the only worldview that gives us a logical foundation to have order and mm. reason and all of those things. And what about things like love and logic and math in the first place? <laughs> those are all very immaterial. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have things that we can touch and feel. Right. They're immaterial. Uh, so we have a, a foundation that explains those things coming from the mind of God, and He's created us in His image to be able to yeah. understand those things and reflect those things. So it's really only the Christian worldview that mm. gives us a rational basis for those, and those are the ty types of things that we love to teach here. And it's not way over your head. <laughs> we bring <laughs> right. it down very, very basic level that we can understand those things and teach those things. And um, I do a microscope workshop where we look at my things under the microscope in the pond water and just see. And that one's different every design. time because oh, yeah. it's like you whatever's going to be in the pond water. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> it's really uh, but neat. they're all creatures. And just like Jesus said, my father cares for the birds of the air, he's caring for all of those creatures. And it's a reminder every That's time really that, that God's caring for all of those creatures. And we can always be pointing to those truths of Scripture. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mr. P, for your time here. And plan your visit today to the Creation Museum. The link is in the description.